Hey guys, Mike Chen. In this video, I am headed to Vancouver, Canada to try out what might just be the world's most worth it omakase meal. Also going to two Michelin noodle places. One serves Japanese udon, the other beef noodle soup. And before that, some Japanese snack time with the sponsor of this video, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. Let's start with Tokyo Treat. And this month's theme is New Year Snacking Party. And if you guys don't know, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat are subscription Japanese snack boxes. But in terms of the snacks, they're very different from each other. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack box where you'll get up to 20 exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. For example, these red white Kit Kats. And these are very prominent colors for New Year's because in Japanese culture, white is sacred and red scares the evil away. So eat a red and white Kit Kat, won't get haunted by a ghost, maybe. Ooh, sesame sweet potato sticks. This is awesome. Sweet, crunchy, sesame -y. A little lemony drink. Citrusy and refreshing. It's a bag of deep fried mochi. Really airy and crunchy. And the Sakurako box, the theme is New Year's in Hiroshima. And with each Sakurako box, there's 20 traditional, authentic, artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas, and a special Japanese tableware item, a furoshiki, which is a traditional Japanese wrapping cloth. These are olive and wine vinegar crackers. But seaweed, whoa, this is freaking delicious. It tastes like salt and vinegar chips, but just so much better. Lemon mochi, Hiroshima is famous for their lemons. Oh, it was one of the best mochi I ever had. It has little pieces of lemon peel inside for an extra bit of zest. Like I said, this Kroko box, more traditional snacks created by local Japanese snack makers. Some of them have been making snacks for over a hundred years. Besides the snacks, I love these booklets that come with every single box. You get to learn about each individual snacks on Japanese history, culture. So you're not just feeding here, you're also feeding here. And I love the mission of this company, which is to promote traditional Japanese culture through the medium of snacking, which is just the best way to do it. Yeah, I said this many times before, whenever these snack boxes arrive on my door, I just feel so excited because every month you're getting something new and it's all sourced locally in Japan and shipped to you wherever you are in the world. So if you are interested in Japanese culture or you just like food, these are amazing boxes to get. And what's even better in the season of giving, get a box for yourself and get one for your loved one as a gift. I'm pretty sure they'll love it. So if you want to give it a try, go to my link down below. Use my promo code Mikey. You'll get $5 off your first Sakurako and your first Tokyo Treat box. I'm just going to go ahead and eat this for breakfast and um, Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Mike Chen here in Vancouver, Canada. Today's gonna be another really fun food day. Heading over to an omakase that might just be the cheapest in the world. Later, I'm going to a Michelin Udon restaurant. But before all that, I'm heading to a sandwich shop where they make barbecue sandwiches with a Filipino twist. Breakfast is off. Feast of barbecue sandwiches and burritos. So, got a breakfast burrito. This thing is stuffed with tocino, which is Philippine cured sweet pork belly. There's some hash browns in here, some cheese, all wrapped around a toasted tortilla. Look at this. This thing is absolutely stuffed. I love breakfast burritos. This is a wake you up, put a smile on your face type of breakfast burrito. The Ticino is a little caramelized on the outside. Very, very tender and sweet. Then that texture goes really well with the home fries. Beautiful crispy on the outside, soft and pillowy on the inside, and you gotta add some hot sauce to this. Yeah, this thing's even better with some heat. Tocino is not a dish I've tried a lot when I was in the Philippines, but wow. Sweet, tender, porky, and fatty. Again, goes so well with the potatoes. I'm gonna try the brisket sandwich next, and I'm gonna save what I think is gonna be my favorite for the end, but this is a smoked brisket sandwich. So it's coffee crusted beef brisket with strawberry gravy, sandwiched between brioche bread. Oh my gosh, this crust looks amazing. You can definitely smell the fruitiness of the gravy. And this thing, just like all their meats, smoked in-house. They also make their own drinks. This is a strawberry mint with lemon. Mmm. Oh, that's so refreshing. This is really, really good. This goes so well with the sandwiches. Mm. You gotta try this. Fresh strawberries, not overly sweet. Really, really refreshing.
Mm. So this sandwich is called a Samsa, and you can definitely taste the coffee in this brisket. Slight bitterness and beautiful fragrance from the coffee. Tender, really smoky brisket. And I love that sweet umami from the strawberry gravy. And a sip of the strawberry drink. That is my favorite way to consume coffee in the morning. <laughs> This is a sandwich I've been waiting for. Fatty pork belly on top with melty cheese, pulled pork on the bottom, again covered in cheese, couple slices of pickles, and check this out. The pork belly is spiced with cumin, and the pulled pork is so cured. Get out of town with this. That's some burst of juice melt in your mouth. Spiced up a bite of sandwich. Oh, I love that toasted fat from the pork belly. Again, both of these meats melt in your mouth. The soft pillowy brioche bun soaks up all that great pork juice. Little bit of pickles in there to cut out the richness. Nice gooey cheese and you get that great smoky flavor from the cumin. Mm. There's some honey here to add a bit of sweetness and more richness to the sandwich. I mean, everything I had today was good. This is definitely my favorite. Pork belly, pulled pork, both just melt in your mouth. I mean, just staring at the second half of that sandwich, my mouth is salivating still. This is the other drink I got, honey ginger. I think both drinks go really good with these sandwiches. It does well to cut through the richness and fat. Very nice compliment. This is a delicious, hefty breakfast. A heck of a way to kick off this food day. This next place is really exciting. It's an omakase sushi restaurant, and the entire course runs about 45 Canadian dollars, or about 30 US, which is just an incredible deal. First dish has arrived. This is the sunomono, which is a vinegar-based dish, and inside is Japanese seaweed in the Atlantic scallop with some little cucumbers, looks like little flowers as well. Love that little vinegary dish in the beginning always helps to kind of whet your appetite. And this one is vinegary, also with a slight umami flavor from the seaweed, and also balanced out by the sweetness of the tender scallops. That was exquisite. Next up, steamed eggs, and this is stuffed full of ingredients. There's mushrooms, there's salmon roll, little yuzu. Holy moly, this is amazing. This is one of the most flavorful steamed eggs you can find anywhere. First of all, that egg is perfect. Just wonderfully delicate and mild, and the salmon roll just brings so much umami pop to this dish. With a little snap and earthiness from the mushrooms, this whole thing is just so wonderfully flavorful. And the aftertaste, a burst of yuzu. Amazing. First piece, this is locally caught rockfish wrapped in sakura leaf. That's really interesting, never had something like that before. Oh, it's very floral. That's very nice. Oh, rockfish is delicious. Amberjack with scallion paste. Mm. That fish just melts. And all you're left with is that nice fatty umami and that delightful scallion flavor. And that is balanced out nicely by the vinegar in the sushi rice. That's really good. Next up, torched flounder. So amazing. A little gelatinous -y texture, very fatty, with that delightful smoke from the torch. Bluefin tuna. Again, melts in your mouth. Fish with a little bit of Japanese mustard for a tiny little kick that just highlights the sweetness of that fish. From here on, the tuna just gets fattier. Chutoro, medium fatty tuna. Mm. Oh, that fat is so nice. This really just lingers on your tongue. My flavor is so good. Mm. 
Next up, ikura. I just like little explosions of pure umami, pure flavor with nice crispy seaweed on the outside. This is one of my favorites, giant piece of scallop with a little yuzu on top. That's about as sweet and as tender of a piece of seafood you can find anywhere in the ocean. And that yuzu just highlights the sweetness of the scallops as well. Spot prawn. Mm. Speaking of sweet, that is really, really sweet. That might actually be the sweetest piece I have so far. Amazing. Local uni. That just the ultimate in richness and creaminess. Next, local eel. Mm, that piece was freaking amazing. Dude, you like the crispy skin, the eel is just so soft, mildly sweet, little bit of smoke. That was absolute perfection. I like to hit the replay button on that a few thousand times. Cucumber hand roll. A delightfully refreshing way to finish this course off. And a miso soup to finish it all off. So delicious. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that was incredible. That meal, about 15 dishes, including 10 nigeri, all for 45 Canadian dollars. So about 30 US. That might just be the cheapest omakase I've ever been to in the world. And it tastes incredible. That place, so worth it. The next place I'm going to is another Michelin rated noodle restaurant known for their beef noodle soup. I'm so excited about this. I have not had beef noodle soup in such a such a long time. So this beef is stewed for over eight hours. Holy moly, this is tender barely squeezing this with my chopstick and it's falling apart. This is so beautiful. You can see all the tendon and marbling in this beef and just trying to pick it up. This thing is breaking apart due to gravity alone. I can smell the herby elements of the broth right away. The noodles feel pretty scrumptious. There's an egg in here and usually with a beef noodle soup, the egg is a marinated egg or tea egg, but here soft boiled Beautiful sunset looking of an egg. Wow. Oh, this broth is so good. This broth is so beautiful, it's making me nervous right now. This is one of the most flavorful beef broth ever. A little bit of heat, a tad of sweetness, and it's just so potent with beef flavor. Mm. Noodle is delightfully al dente. The flavor is so balanced and you don't need to add anything to this to make it better. With that said, I like my beef noodle soup on the very vinegary sour side. So I'm just gonna add some rice vinegar. And of course, this is a very traditional condiment to add to beef noodle soup. And it's white vinegar in shu Taiwanese fashion. Mm. Noodles are extremely scrumptious. I haven't even tried the beef yet. Don't need to chew this. All you gotta do is squeeze that piece of beef between the tongue and the top part of your mouth and the beef just dissipates into this, this velvety, beefy blanket. Mm. Egg, delicious. Adds to the richness of this beef noodle soup. This is just the most perfect bowl of beef noodle soup. Walking in here when it's drizzly and chilly outside and slurping this bowl of beef noodle soup that instantly warms you up. It's such a wonderful feeling. This is by far the best bowl of beef noodle soup I've had in Vancouver. I don't think I've ever had beef this tender before in a beef noodle soup. And they give you a ton of beef in here as well. Oh, I'm just sweating right now. I'm so happy. Beef noodle soup is one of my favorite things in the world. Actually, if you want to check out my beef noodle soup recipe, I'll put the link in my description box. Not going to be as good as this, but I really don't know how many beef noodle soup that would be. Unfortunately, it's gone. Fortunately, my noodle day continues with another Michelin noodle restaurant. Let's go. Finally, dinner is at Motonobu. This place was the first udon restaurant in Vancouver and it's a Michelin rated udon shop. 
Here, everything is made from scratch, including the noodles, the sauce, and if you're on a budget, you can get a cold bowl of freshly made udon noodles with a tempura egg for around three US dollars. Unbelievable. These noodles, just by grabbing it with the chopsticks, feel so stringy. Dip this into the misuyu sauce. Oh, that's so chewy. This texture is just heavenly. It's chewy and soft, really springy and slightly elastic. The noodles are thick and smooth and slippery with such a satisfying slurp. It's so freaking good. You can definitely tell how fresh that is. And I love how this bowl of noodles comes with a tempura egg. Look at how gooey the egg is. Dunk this a little in the sauce. This is just the most delightful tempura egg. Such a delicately crunchy shell on the outside. Inside just soft and gooey and creamy. And it goes so well with that light, delicate texture of the udon. I mean this, for $3. You're not gonna find a better meal than this. This bowl, I'm so, so, so excited about. This is the Niku Toji. It's an egg swirl in a dashi broth with giant slab of fatty, meaty brisket. Are you kidding me with this thing? This is one of the most beautiful bowls of udon I have ever set eyes upon. I mean, the brisket, oh my gosh. Look how fatty and tender this thing is. It is just breaking apart. And as soon as this came to the table, you can smell the dashi. You can definitely smell the brisket. Oh, I'll get out of town with this. I have so many questions. One sip of this is gonna bring out all the happy emotions you have in your soul. It's pure liquid flavor essence with so much depth and umami. Grab some noodles with the eggs. The udon still retains this nice chewiness and the egg cloud in the soup melts on your tongue. There's a little bit of fried, I think they're tempura flakes, that still somehow retains this crunch even though it's been soaking in the broth. It just adds a crunchy texture to this bowl where most of the ingredients except for the noodles just melts in your tongue. Now, I haven't even tried this brisket yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna do the same thing. Mm. Oh wow, especially the fatty parts of the brisket instantly dissolves. This is so amazingly tender. Oh my gosh. Mm. I mean, every part of it. So, so, so tender. It's like the most luxurious beefy egg drop noodle soup in the world. This bowl, as soon as they prepared it, smelled the yuzu. Look at this giant piece of shrimp on top. Almost looks like a mini lobster. I see garlic chips, shishito peppers, mushrooms, bok choy. Inside there's more shrimp. So this broth is a mix of dashi and their chicken broth that you can see stewing right over here. It's more thick and rich looking. I can definitely taste that yuzu. Whoa, there is some heat in this bowl. A lot of heat. Oh, this is wonderful. I love this so much. My taste buds are both being bombarded with this rich umami flavor of the chicken dashi combo broth. At the same time, it's on fire. That shrimp is sweet and succulent. This is unlike any bowl of udon I've ever had before. This is a freaking 20 out of 10. It's so many flavors. Got the nice refreshing crunch from the veg, smokiness from the shishito, sweet, delicate flavor of the shrimp, and this broth is just pure pure umami, both from the land and the sea. And that yuzu, that just highlights all the other flavors in this bowl. This is one of my favorite bowl, we don't even know. Oh, it's so good. It's so complex, you gotta come and try this one. Absolutely mind blowing. This one, I'm also so excited about. This is the spicy tantan udon with a couple of giant thick pieces of pork belly inside. Look how beautiful this is. Bok choy, some cilantro, Holy moly, this thing is tender. Oh my goodness. Yeah, squeeze it with your chopstick. No resistance whatsoever. Oh, so good. 
that's everything that's good about tantan noodles. Peanutty, spicy, rich, thick, and creamy, and also with that wonderful umami kick. Oh God, I love that chashu so much. When you take a bite of this chashu, it dissolves and just coats the top of your tongue with this umami-filled, gelatinous -y sheet of fat. It's smoky, it's porky, so rich and satisfying. The bok choy definitely helps to cut through the richness a bit, and you'll need it because this bowl of udon is definitely one of the richest I've had so far. And this thing is just perfect on a cold Canadian afternoon. Last bowl I got, this bowl of udon has no broth, it's a ma soba with the giant cuts of brisket, scallions, tofu skin, seaweed, and just loads of min tai ko all over a soft boiled egg. Mix this up so all that creaminess of the yolk in the man tai ko just covers up every strand of noodles. This is gonna be good, I know it. Oh, look at this. This is slap me in the face delicious. Wow, this bowl widow might just be the epitome of flavor in a bowl. There's almost a flavor overload. The mint taiko contributes a creamy, rich texture combined with its salty, slightly spicy, and ultra umami rich flavor. And that is made even creamier and richer by the egg. Tofu skin adds a little chewiness and sweetness, and then the brisket. Mm. Welcome back to the party any day of the week and all that. It's just clinging to the al dente, chewy, elastic noodles. Yeah, this is just pure flavor in a bowl. Wow. Oh, one more thing I have to try. This is their pressed sushi. And it's half salmon, half tuna. And the salmon pieces have ikura and onions on top. Oh, that's so fatty and nice. Onions a little pickled, so it cuts through the richness of the salmon. Both fish get a little bit of smoke from the sear, and they both melt as soon as it touches your tongue. Now, I say if you come here, definitely get this as well. I think my favorite, I personally love dry noodles because those are always gonna be chewier. The noodle texture is gonna be better. So I love the maz udon, but that bowl of yuzu shrimp udon, just mind-blowingly fantastic. I mean, everything is good here. The brisket, the chashu, the noodles themselves, incredibly springy and fresh. If I had to choose, those two bowls are my favorite. Well. Also, also this, so good. I mean, this place definitely lives up to the hype in an absolutely phenomenal and it's just the most perfect way to wrap up my food day here in Vancouver. As always, all the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.